Okay. I want to share with you an excerpt from Christianity versus Islam by Messenger Elijah Muhammad regarding the Native American Indians, as they're known. It's page number 23. Uh, this little pamphlet was originally uh, a lecture that Messenger Elijah Muhammad gave in the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on November the 7th, 1962. He says, and I quote, in America, where that they came, killed off the original settlers here, the Red Indians, who were exiled out of what is known as East India today, 16,000 years ago. That was 10,000 years before there was a Caucasian on our planet. They came through the Bering Straits over that ice and started making a home here in the Western Hemisphere. At that time, the Lord God Almighty Allah said they referred to this part of the planet as a prisoner island because of this people, the Indians, Red Indians. They were disobedient to Allah and to the law of God and refused to accept Islam. Islam has always been the teaching or the religion of God, but not always under that name. Let's, let's, let's slow the pump our brakes for a minute. Now, this is important because if you was to talk to a conscious member of the nation of Islam, you would, you would think that we're teaching that Islam is the true religion of humanity. And you have Muslims around the world that will literally argue with Christians or argue with the Hebrew Israelites or argue with the Pan-Africans or argue with the, the, the Buddhists or the Hindus or what have you, trying to show and prove that Islam is the true religion. The reason why that is a straw man's argument and a false narrative is because there is no difference between Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism. It's all the same thing. Judaism, Judaism is Islam. Islam, the Abrahamic traditions, the Kemetic sciences, spiritual sciences, all of that is the exact same people, our ancestors, black people. And it's all just different manifestations of their explanation of how creation came about, how what makes rain, hell, snow, and earthquakes, what makes the forest grow, what makes the deserts expand and retract, what makes the rivers run, um, what delivers the healthy baby, um, the heaven that comes from making love to your spouse, the, the, the pleasure that comes from fulfilling hunger, um, the, the, the peace that comes from being warm when it's cold outside, being cool in our hut or our tent or in our jungle um, when it's a heat wave out there, to be able to quench our thirst. The, these, these are multiple events that we're trying to understand and that we are observing each and every day, but we, we, we don't understand the math to it, the phenomena, that we don't understand the cause to all these trillions and trillions of effects that we smell, we hear them, we taste them, we, 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 we can see them, we can feel them. Now, I mean, you know, we can think about it, we can imagine all this stuff, you know what I mean? And it's no limit to that. And this is why the message teaches us that wisdom is independent of anyone. However, if you are a student follower of Messenger Elijah Muhammad's teachings, he's not a Muslim like the 99.99% .99 of Muslims that you see. And an our savior has arrived, he explained to us a deep mathematical principle. Master Muhammad asked him the questions. He answered, he basically explained to us, okay, the, the world's population is basically divided like this. 
you got 85% the masses. They are mentally dead. They just don't know. They worship that which they know not what. Then you have the 10% who are the rich. They know, but they're wicked. They're, they know, but they're greedy. They know, but they want to use capitalism and, and, and socialism and communism and all these other isms to financially rule over the masses of the people. Then you had the 5%, the poor righteous teachers who do not believe in the teachers of the 10%. And, and these 5% is their job is to teach freedom, justice, and quality to the human family of the planet Earth. And they are the ones that suffer the ridicules, the bow and arrows, the, the mudslinging, the persecution, the, the, the prisons, the beatings, the assassination attempts, you name it. All of that goes into the struggle. Now, I mean, the, the scriptures teach us basically that um, when you teach the in-depth teachings of a teacher, like say the teach, say Jesus taught the Romans crucified them, but the two thieves next to him, they wasn't teachers, but they got crucified too. <laughs> I mean, Paul teaching the teachings of Jesus in such a unique and divine mathematical way was a serious threat. So they crucified him, not like Jesus. They turned this behind upside down and crucified him. That's how serious those teachings were to the government or to the Roman authorities at that time, some 2,000 years ago. Now, we have the types and anti-types, all this kind of stuff. But Paul knew that no matter what happened, he was willing to sacrifice his all. No matter what prison they sent Paul to, he kept teaching. Now, I mean, he taught the prisoners, he taught the, the guards. When he got stranded on the island of Malta and the serpent came out the fire and bit him all on his hand, you know what I mean? And he was hungry and cold and in the dark, he sparked the light. He, he rubbed two sticks together and he, he, he took and started him a little fire. Now, he didn't have no big, giant, fancy temple. His, he didn't have a candlestick sitting on top of the hill like the mega churches, the super temples, the giant mosques, and all the big, beautiful schools. He didn't have none of that. He just was on a tiny little island of Malta, and he just had two sticks, and he just was rubbing his sticks. And that friction, now, I mean, in order to get a fire, you need three elements. You need some oxygen. You need some type of fuel. I mean, you know, and you need that friction point. Now, I mean, so he's able to keep doing that, keep, keep, keep producing that agitation. It's, it's a war of attrition, and he eventually sparked that fire. You know what I mean? But when that light was out there, that light was shining, the devil came out of that light. The devil came out of that technology. The devil came out and bit him on his works. And the world was like, oh, look at that. We do God. Justice came on. He's a criminal. This, that, the other. But the Bible says what? The Bible says when they was talking that crap, Paul looking at the serpent like, <laughs> I mean, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's like, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, even 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 my beloved brothers turning on me. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You got you got brothers um coming through the dark, demons. You know what I mean? It's like boom. But they're not going to be able to stop this work. Because if Master Far Muhammad, if a law God is with you, who could be against you? So what did Paul do? Paul took and just simply shook the down snake off and threw it back inside the fire. Like, get out of here, that corny behind stuff. I mean, your COINTELPO technology is not going to stop the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, I mean, these teachings are going to be successful rather where physically living or dead. So there's no fear. There's no doubt. There's no trepidation. Now, I mean, it's, it's like it, it ain't even no rap <laughs> when it comes to these raw teachings, these war teachings of Messenger Elijah Muhammad. Now, I mean, all these little little serpents, you know what I mean, thinking it, I just stepped on them and just kept walking. <laughs> I mean, it was like, what? I just kept it moving. You know what I mean? You know, like, now when one crossed my path, <laughs> I kicked it to the side of the road. <laughs> I mean, and I just kept moving. I move, I move without fear. 
So when you read in this book that Islam, they were disobedient to law until the law of God and refused to accept Islam. Islam has always been a teaching or the religion of God, but not always under that name. But the meaning or principle of belief and practice has always been the same. We believe in one God. We submit to that God. Entire submission to his will is Islam. That's what we call Islam. And that has always been among us. Think about that. We did not always call it Islam. We did not always call it Islam. We might call it something else. If we're living in India, it's not Islam. It might be called Hinduism. If we're living in China, it might be called Buddhism or Taoism. If we're living in uh, Native America, um, the black Indians, the Dalits walking across the Bering Strait 16,000 years ago, they may be talking about the sacred spirits. They may be talking about the great grandfather, the, the, the mother earth, what have you. Now, I mean, the sacred eagle, the, I mean, you know, the sacred rivers or whatever. Now, I mean, but what happens is organized religions come out of that. So the persecution, the opposition comes about when people started worshiping things besides the law, things besides the original people, things besides the original man, who is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. So what you find is the people of the Twa, the so-called uh, pygmies, the Bakwa people, they showed the so-called pygmy drinking his water. He didn't open a spring water bottle and stand up and drink the water and it went down. He got on his hands and knees and he sipped the water from the river or the creek or the stream. And when he did that, my mind went back in time. My thoughts went back in time and I began to thicker or think about how that simple concept transformed into organized religions because water symbolizes life or wisdom or Hakeem. Water seeks its own level. If, if I took a, if I took this bottle of water and I poured it on top of a countertop, there are all type of mathematical things that would happen. I'm going to just give you this a premise of it. When the water hits the counter, sound waves is going to strike and they're going to vibrate. Now, when the water hits the counter, no matter what natural circumstance you in. Now, and if it's an unnatural surface in some type of laboratory, you're doing it in outer space. If I pour water in outer space, it's not going to pour. It's going to freeze. It's going to, I mean, if you, if you could get it out in time, it's going to go up instead of down, depending on whatever objects are around it, whatever gravitational pull is going to affect that water. But I'm talking just in the natural realm. And in the natural one, when you pour that water on the floor, on the table, on the wash machine, on the on the on the car, on the street, it's going to send a sound wave at exactly 1,120 feet per second. That vibration is going to affect your inner eardrum, and you're going to hear the water. If it's a waterfall and it's hitting the ground, you're going to hear the waterfall. If the water is moving and it's running through the creek, you're going to hear that stream, that creek, that river. You're going to hear that water. Even if it's underground, you can hear that artesian well underneath the ground. Know what I mean, so it's all mathematics. There are no mistakes. God don't make mistakes. Everything's mathematics. We learn from all kinds of things, trials, tribulations, errors, or whatever we want to call it. But in nature, there's no mistakes. So Messenger Elijah Muhammad, the gods, don't make mistakes. That don't mean we don't misspeak, we don't miscalculate, what have you. We're saying that even your mistake is a truth. Your error is a mathematical effect. So when 
I saw this so-called pygmy go bend down to drink the water. It pitch it remind me of people that make salat. People of ancient Kemet bowing down before the Pharaoh, bowing down, being thankful, giving, recognizing authority, being, being, giving um honor to praise. I mean, because you can't, the forest can't live without the water. The people of the Nile Valley civilization, if that Nile River dried up, they die. When you drink that water, you take an impure water into the temple. Once it goes into the temple, it purifies it. To, it, it cleanses the kidneys. It helps cleanse your liver. You can't take that water that you took in, which was pure, and mix your profane with that pure. You can't mix your falsehood with that truth. You can't mix your reality with that spooky stuff. So, so when the people that twat drink that water, you don't take and be like, oh, now my bladder's full. I'm going to urinate into this river or this lake or this stream or this well. No, you mixing impure water with the pure water. You're mixing tricknology into the teachings of Amba Elijah Muhammad. No, those, you have to keep them distinct. You don't, Mother Nature, I show you how she mathematically, like, oh, I separate the salt water from the fresh water, the cold waters from the warm waters. The fish in this water can live in this water, but they'll die if you put them in this water. Now, I mean, I, I remember when I was a child, you know, we, we used to, I was living in North Philadelphia, so we used to always go down Huntington Park, and at Huntington Park, they had a swimming pool for us to swim in, you know, a, a, a city-owned park, basically, a community park, a, a public um, swimming pool. So, you know, people in the swimming pool, me and my friends, you know, we're like, intuitively, we from the people of Tua too. We from the people of ancient Kemet. That's, that stuff is still in our DNA. It's still in our messenger DNA. You know what I mean? So our MRN, our MRA, you know what I mean? So we're, we're, we're taking and... We going on adventures. I mean, we we would walk for miles. I mean, we don't care where. We going all over the place just exploring, cause that's in us. But we don't have fathers at home. We don't have big brothers that is going to give us the mentoring that we need. We don't have the big homies that's giving us proper manhood training. So we're we're going out on our own trying to figure out who are we? What are we? Why are we here? <laughs> I mean, so we're, we're, we're children just exploring. You know what I mean? And, you know, I remember on both ends of the swimming pool, it was like woods and they had like the water out there, little creeks or whatever. So we would go out to the little streams and, and have our little jars, you know, uh, um, Mayonnaise jars or whatever, mustard jars, containers. And at that time, we used to play dead, man. So we wouldn't have the tops for the jar. We would take our tops back then and take a piece of metal or a sharp rock or something and dig up the hot street, take the tar out the street and pack it into the top. And we would draw our little game on the street and we'd toss our tops into it and we played dead, man, like that. We used to spin tops back then. We had yo-yos and things that was like scientific. I mean, like you had a yo-yo, it's like the pendulum, the law of the Kabbalion. I mean, let me just pull that out for y'all, for those that may not be aware of the Kabbalion. This this right here is the Kabbalion. Let me, let me pull out another book, one of the books that Messenger Elijah Muhammad was told to read from Master Far Muhammad. The secret of the ages. Now I mean, okay. If you never heard of this, I definitely um recommend that you. you in fact, you probably could go in this day and time. You probably could go on YouTube and just watch videos about it. Now that they may have it as a um audio book, if you will. Let me see here. Uh, 
Okay. This is just give you just a little, it's a whole bunch of information there, but I'm just giving you a little brief thing. And the contents, they have um, the world's greatest discovery in the beginning, the purpose of existence, the open sesame of life, the genie of your mind, the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, the universal mind, the primal cause, matter, dream, or reality, the philosopher's charm, the kingdom of heaven, to him that hath, to the manner born. Why I grow old, the secret of power, the one thing I do, the mastermind. The master of your faith. The law of attraction. See, people think that the law of attraction is something new. And um, I got all them books right here. So like, here go her other book, Rhonda Burr. This is the, the power. I mean, you know, so, so, um, So um, these books cover our ancestors' teachings. And I mean, this is the uh, Kabbalion. The, this is the definitive edition of the Kabbalion. And... Let me see. I'm trying to find a short version for y'all. In fact, let me see if I can find the summary. That's even better. Okay, here go the contents for this one. All right. So we have in the table of contents here it's the introduction. The Hermetic philosophy. Bas basically, you had the black god Tahuti. Now, I mean, Herms, um, the seven Hermetic principles, mental transmutation, the all, the mental universe, the divine paradox, the all in all, the planes of correspondence. The mental universe, basically, the principle of the mental universe is this. First of all, I want you to understand. This information was written thousands of years ago. This is before Islam, before Christianity, before Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, before uh, Catholicism, whatever. You know what I mean? Before any organized religion existed on the face of the planet Earth. All right? The, uh, let's see. Okay, here we go here. This, this is what I want to share with y'all, this, this little brief chart right here. Now, when I wrote the book, The Elaboration of the Law's Lessons, those of you that never read The Elaboration of the Law's Lessons, you can get that um, on our website at supremeangels.org or you can just email me at minister. I'll leave ministerleaf at gmail.com or you can um, um, use Cash App or whatever. You know what I mean? Our um, nonprofit name is the Dollar Sign Naal Institute, Inc. That's N-A-A-L-I-N-S-T. How you spell Institute? I-N-S-T-I-T-U-T-E-I-N-C. Okay. I'll put a link somewhere in here. But the reason why I'm... When it came to the elaboration of a law's lessons, I'm talking about um, what I did was I literally researched not just the 1930s branch of the Nation of Islam 
under the messenger who at that time was Cam. His name was Kareem Abdul Muhammad, and it was the lost found nation of Islam in the wilderness of North America. And there was no such thing as um, Muhammad's temples in the, in the nation of Islam. There was no such thing as mosques in the nation of Islam. There's no such thing as masjid. All that was new stuff that came about later. The messenger did all that, by Mr. Farrakhan, different ministers, what have you. Originally, Masfar Muhammad thing was, it was Allah's temples of Islam. White people, the devils, the media, slanders, you know, the voodoo cult and all this other crap. But it was Allah's temples of Islam. They did not believe that the temple was a place. They believed that the temple was a state, that the temple was you. You was the temple of God. Their concept was purely 1,000% based off of the thousands and thousands and thousands of year old teachers of our ancestors. This is why the Abu Elijah Muhammad is not, is not like, oh, Allah taught me for three years and four months, 1,120 days. He's like, yeah, but in those teachings, his thing is like, I'm not going to sit you down and go turn to the book of Exodus. Um, this means this. Turn in the book of Genesis. Jacob is really Yaqub. Look, you see over here this guy, he's going to take some um, colored cattle, some ring straight and speckled and a black, brown, yellow, and red, and he's going to interbreed them. He's going to take and go to this cedar tree and cut the bark and take this white stuff out of this tree and mix it into the um, feed of the, of the cattle. And when they drink of this different chemically what is going to genetically alter the animal's DNA and when they have sex they're going to start producing pure white cows this stuff is in the book of genes the book of genetics the book of genes the book of origins it's it's nothing but Dr. Yaku grafting the devil on the island of Patmos or P-Land which is 25 mile volcanic island out there in the Mediterranean you know what I mean so all this stuff is well known well it's ancient teachings it's like People reading the Bible talking about Noah and Ark. You're like, you know how many Noahs and Arks there? You know how many crucified Jesuses existed thousands of years before Jesus? That's, they, they're taking our ancestors' ancient symbolic teachings of Usa and Osset and him getting cut up and chopped up. And you know I mean, it's, it's just all there. You know I mean, literally, it's, it's like anything you think is some type of new teaching. The Bible teaches there's nothing new under the sun. You know what I mean? So the messenger explained to us that Master Muhammad, um, father, the 24th scientist, he didn't know everything. <laughs> See, people get spooky when it comes to the black man being God. It's like a child being told that there is no mystery Santa Claus, that your daddy is really the Santa Claus. And that child, like, mentality, that child, the state, the child is like, well... That if you really Santa Claus, where's Rudolph? <laughs> like, which means where's your reindeer with the red nose that lights up so that you can fly your sled through the night and all that stuff? It's like, listen, now all that's part of the bull crap that they taught y'all, they programmed y'all with. You know what I mean? The real Santa Claus don't do all that. The real the real Santa Claus, you don't you don't have to leave no milk and cookies out for daddy. You know what I mean? I don't I don't even drink milk. I'm I'm lactose intolerant. I mean, I, you know I mean, so so it, it's it's I'm being fictitious here, but joking aside, I have to put the medicine inside a little juice for you to be able to digest this. And I mean, because it's really a serious, serious subject It's really a dangerous, dangerous subject. It's a subject that I know. In the end, it's going to be blood up to the horse's bridle, as the scriptures puts it. So I'm trying to get you ready. Now, I mean, I'm trying to get our people aware and conscious. I know these devils. I know the 10%. I know the, the COINTEL pro forces. I've been battling for 40 years. They've been trying to kill me physically for 40 years, literally. You know what I mean? And, you know, we survive off of our instinct. You know what I mean? Our, our, our hunter and prey abilities. You know what I mean? You got to know when to fight and when to run. 
Now, I mean, you got to know when to speak and when to shut up. You got to know when to go public and when just to fall back. It's a, it's a science to this. And you have people that move like this is an organized religion. Now, I mean, you have people, um, you know, if you got your fatigues on and you're in the jungle, you good. Now, I mean, you you know, you're blending into your surrounding. Now, I mean, you, you got the right boots on. You, you know what I mean? You, you know not to step on twigs and make noise. You know not to light a cigarette at nighttime because you might get shot in your eye. Know what I mean, but at the same time, if you're not in the jungle and you still running around with your fatigues, it's like, yo, man, take that crap off. You run around with your FOI uniform. You got your, your, your garbs on in the time of war. I, re I remember life and death situation. I remember my wife come to see me in the super maximum prison. I'm at war with the security captain, Michael Machino. Know what I mean? One of them Satan type devils. Know what I mean? And they trying to kill kill fruit. Now I mean they 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 you know. And it's not because we the aggressors. Because I'm trying to get temple services. I'm trying to get nation Islam services up this joint. Now I mean you know. But long story short, my wife come to visit me. Now I mean, and I see the persecution on her. Now I mean, and you know my thing is. You disrespect my wife is on. Now I mean it's, it's personal, up close and personal. Now I mean so my thing is like, all right, we're gonna have to avoid. If you want me to come home, we're gonna have to outfox these devils. We gotta outthink these these these, these little snakes. Now I mean, so I said step one: stop coming up here in your garbs. That was step one. Now I mean, we in the temple. You see, I mean that's beautiful. Then we in the masjid. We in the mosque. We we eating at the salam restaurants. We we in Philly at Sister Muhammad's kitchen. You can wear your mask, whatever. That's beautiful. But I don't want these devils knowing who you are. So the message to teach us and message to the black man that when God came, he had horns coming out his hands, but he hid his power. You know who you are. I know who I am. Know what I mean? But that don't mean that you walk through the village with your fatigues on and your guns out. A good soldier is going to be like, oh, take that off. Now, I mean, be like, what are you doing? Bury, the, bury, bury your American assault rifle. You know, I'm going to keep, keep this, this, this hand joint on me. I'm going to have my bag with me. You know what I mean, but I'm going to put on the clothes of the enemy. You know what I mean, I'm, I'm going to blend in. It's war. I know where I'm at. I know what I'm doing. You know what I mean, and if you're going to get over the the mountain, if you're gonna get through the snow, if you're gonna get through that hot desert, if you're gonna survive that salty ocean, if you're gonna get through the storms, the earthquakes, the 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 diseases and and, and all of the chaos and the sabotage, you you're gonna have to have faith, but you're gonna have to be properly taught and you're gonna have to be properly trained. And you're gonna have to know how to move like God. So you, you gotta be like Moses and the wise man. Now I mean, you know, when you when you when 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 Al Kidder, when that when that angel was was making certain moves, Musa and Moses couldn't understand. He's like, yo, man, you you just got a body. What the heck is you doing? Now I mean you you helping people that didn't even want to help us. Now I mean, it's like, listen, man, you spooky. You I told you don't don't question me. You, you if you riding, you riding. You're gonna ride or die, get the stepping. I mean, I I I got this on my own. Now, I mean, so my thing been like, yo, man, I'm 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 moving. Now, I mean, I'm and like, listen, I'm I'm when when you met me, I mean, I'm on the tip like, I'm a minister of Messenger Elijah Muhammad's teachings. I'm like, listen, like the messenger. He's like, um, when Master Muhammad departed, they got ghosts. Now, I mean, he like, hey, what you think? The, the message like, if if, if it's only me. <laughs> I'm going to carry the flag. I'm going to move out. I'm gonna, it's, it ain't going to stop. Now, I mean, you'd be like, yeah, I would love to have help. Yeah, I would love to have some resources. Yeah, I would love to have a change of clothes, be able to take a nice shower or bath. And Now, soldier appreciate that stuff. But right now, he's like, man, my, my boots is ran over. Now, I mean, they muddy. They bloody. I got pains in all my joints. You know what I mean? I've been shot, stabbed, thorns and bristles and cut my face all up. Now I mean, I'm hungry and thirsty. I'm sleeping in the mud, but I gotta stay alert. Now I mean, 
He's he's at war right now. He's on the front line. He's in the trenches right now. Bombs is going off. They trying to blow. They dropping bombs. He's like, all right, let me just shore up this down the trench. Now I mean, that's all in it, family. Now I mean, we we have to fight against the ops, the opposition, the ops. Those ops will be like, damn, they popping up in your own family. They popping up across the street, next door, around the corner. Now, I mean, you know, your, your enemies become your friends. Your friends becoming your enemies. It's just so many dynamics to this struggle. It's just ridiculous. Now, I mean, but it gets greater later. So part of being able to utilize it is to me, everything. Now, listen to the language I'm using, family. Everything that everybody believes on this planet, I'm talking in the past. I'm talking about right now um, in, what's this, August 31st, 2022, as they call it. And I'm saying a million, billion, trillion years in the future will never, ever be outside these seven principles. Think that over. I'm talking about everything in Islam is in seven simple principles. Every Afrocentric, Meta Neta, ancient Kemetic, Egyptian, Nubian, Sudanian, Kushite, Ethiopian, Azanian, South African, the Horn of Africa, the West Morocco, the Maghreb, the, the Moors, the FOIs, the five percent of gods and earths. All of that, 1,000% of that, every Catholic, every atheistic teaching, every political, every economical, every nutritional, how Dr. Sabi teach, everything that you have ever imagined in the mind of man or woman goes to these seven principles of the Kabbalah. This is it. Principle number one, mentalism. The all is mine. Everything and every thought in creation is mental. I don't care what it is. You'd be like, oh, the Egyptians built the pyramids. No. <laughs> the Egyptians thought of a pyramid and brought the mental into the material. The pyramid has to be mental. It has to exist in the mind's eye before you bring it out into reality. The pyramid must begin by imagination. A phone was an idea. A book, a Bible, Quran, the Torah, the secret ages, every book began in the mind. The concept of money began in the mind. The concept of interest, the concept of bankruptcy was an idea. Everything, the sun was a thought made manifest. The earth was a thought made manifest. The body of man, the black man's physical body began in the mental before the material. There was already a sun, a piece of the sun two trillion years later spun off and cooled down and produced the earth. The earth already had animals on it. And then came the black man 76 trillion years ago. The sun was here 78 trillion years ago. Huh? The black man physically did, the, there was no such thing as a physical a law in person. There was no such thing as a physical black man 77 trillion years ago. A trillion years before there's no Black men are gods on earth. There's already the sun being made. The sun is not created, Messenger Elijah Muhammad said. The sun is made. Now, we could do the math. Now, I mean, the sun, 2,679,785 miles in circumference, 850,000 miles in diameter, half the diamond is 426,500 miles, which is the radius or the core of the sun. The sun is 93 million miles away from the earth. That's equal to 150 million kilometers. Light travels 186,000 miles per second. Since the sun is 93 million miles away from the planet earth, that means that it takes the sun eight minutes and 20 seconds, or exactly 500 seconds to activate the melanin or the carbon in my We could do that all day long. That's child's play to the gods. Now, I mean, but... The Holy Quran teaches us about our shams, that sun. The messenger says that the sun is not created 
When you create something, you start it from the thought. That sun is made. What do you mean? That sun is hydrogen and helium. Now, what is this atom vibrating on this level called hydrogen? Like, if you go to the Dollar Tree store or something like that, and it's somebody's birthday, you want to get them some balloons. You know what I mean? The, the mathematics is not in order, and the, and the loved one was the die. You know, somebody got killed in the hood. We see a lot of people that'll take and use mathematics and they'll spark up fire and they'll light candles. They'll put stuffed teddy bears and toys out there. But one of the things that they do sometimes is they'll take and put atoms of helium inside of a balloon. The helium atoms are lighter than the regular atoms in our atmosphere. So our atmosphere being six miles high, covering 196,940,000 square miles, that helium is lighter than air. The air is 78% nitrogen. I mean, so it's heavier, it's, 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 it's denser. So what happens is when you put the helium atoms inside that balloon, the balloon floats in the air. Get too close to the sun, it's going to pop and fall back down. I mean, cause and effect, the Kabbalion. But it's all mentalism. So the first principle of our ancestors is mentalism. The all is mine. You know what I mean? Everything is really mental. You'd be like, this, this, this might look physical, but it's really mental. If I, if I took this mic and spun it around, rotated it, you know what I mean? And spun it real fast. You hear that? What's that sound wave? Sound coming from something moving. That which is it's affecting the friction in the air. It's like it's breaking the, the, the sound barrier. It makes so much noise. If I could spin it fast enough, you have to do mentalism. You have to imagine. Imagine me spinning. Imagine me spinning um, your car. Say you took your, your, your car. And you spun your car real fast on this machine. And it's spinning revolutions quicker than quick. You hear all this noise. It'll burst your eardrum. But once it spins so loud, it goes to the other polar end. It don't make no noise. So we live on a planet rotating on her axis 1,037 and one third miles per hour. We're living on a planet that's 24,896 miles in her circumference. So we can extract 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 46 seconds of one solar day. White people got it a little wrong. They call it 24 hours. But we get 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, 46 seconds in one solar year. They call it 365 days. Plus, they like the math is also, they, oh, this year we're going to have to have a leap year after four years. You know what I mean? So they have to do daylight savings time. Their math is off. Their Islam is off. Our ancestors had accurate mathematics. God adds and multiplies. The devil divides and subtract. They was operating in a harmony with the universal order of things, with mother nature. So the first principle was the principle of mentalism. So if you spun that car real fast, it's a metal car. But in that rotation, in that cipher, in that speed of that cipher, the darkness turns to light. What happens? It heats up. The atoms is vibrating on the, at a faster pace. So now that metal is turning red. Oh, our sun is red because it's an old star. New stars are blue. I mean, you know, it's, it's spinning that fast. It's getting hotter and hotter. Now unless you make it heat go even hotter, it's spinning even fast. They call that plasma. Like, it's so darn hot now. It's turning white hot. It's turning blue. It's turning, I mean, it's turning all the colors of the rainbow is now coming. Now we see every color in the universe, that spectrum is in this one object that we're spinning. Now, this is just a car. This is a tiny atom on Earth. There's not many billions of cars is on this planet. You know how many billions of planets is in our solar system? It's in our not solar system. It's inside of our universe. Now, I mean, so this is just really nothing doing something. And whenever you have something that's doing nothing, we just intelligently, to understand it and to convey the idea, we define it as nothing. But it's really something, you see? So 
we take and spin that thing around like that, eventually the solid metal gets hot. And what happens? It melts. The car melts. It turns into a liquid. And what if you spun that liquid real, real, real fast? This is liquid metal, liquid atoms of iron. It's spinning real, real fast with carbon in there, whatever. And I mean, now it turns to plastic. It disappears. Meaning that the physical car, just because of the way you drove it, the way you spun it, it disappeared in front of your physical eye. Because the car, the whole time, it was mental. But it's vibrating on such a low pace that we consider it physical. The second principle is the principle of correspondence. As above, so beneath. Master Fahd Muhammad teaches us. So my little pyramids here. Okay. Master Fahd Muhammad teaches us in our 99 actual facts lesson about the Great Pyramid of Giza. He teaches us that the Great Pyramid of Giza weighs 14 billion pounds, consists of 2,800,000 blocks, each block weighing an average of two and a half tons or 5,000 pounds. It is 481 or 764 feet high. What do you mean 481 or 764 feet high? Short version. That means that if you measure the pyramid from the base to the tip, from the base here to the tip, you get that measurement, 481. But if you go underneath the pyramid into the chambers, now it's higher because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's another part to this pyramid. As above, so beneath. The law of correspondence. When you study these pyramids and you look at Orion's belt up in the sky, you look at the galaxy, you look at our stars, they're putting the heavens on the earth, the law of correspondence. Jesus taught like this, you are the body of Christ. As within, so without. As above, so beneath. The principle of vibration, as we talked about that card, everything is vibrating. Now I mean, if I take this water, I need a swig of this water. Ah, now, when I drunk that water, my heart and soft palate, my lips, my tongues, my teeth, you know, my esophagus, you know I mean, it goes into my digestive system. It's, it's going to help hydrate my body. But what's really happening there? I'm not drinking water. We call it water. I'm taking in atoms of hydrogen and oxygen, H2O. It's like your car could run off of gas. Now, I mean, they'd be like, it's 10% ethanol or corn in here. Now, I mean, we, we're using fossil fuels or whatever the case may be. We're using different chemicals. And, but that water or that food, what we call a calorie, we burn calories. That they the, the food is vibrating at such a rate that the body is assimilating it, you see? We have, according to Master Farah Muhammad, nine forces which balances our equilibrium. Attraction, repulsion, cohesion, assimilation, dissimulation, creation, projection, reception, and intuition. You'd be like, I could be sitting here reading. And Master Farah Muhammad sent a thought. Boom. Tune in. How can you tune in? You got to first tune out. Turn the TV off. Turn the music. Turn the distractions off. Turn the negative thoughts away. Go into peace. And on your mind's eye, the wife be right there next to me sleep. I'm resting. I mean, and in my mind's eye, I see, oh, these jokers think <laughs> that they're going to gun me down tomorrow. Hmm. Okay. This is what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm still here but the law will show you a law will warn you a law will protect you a law will tell you don't go there go there because you're in harmony with the universal order of things you don't worry about trick knowledge 
because you're working with the reality. So the third principle is the principle of vibration. So this so-called water, H2O, hydrogen and oxygen, if we vibrate it real, real fast, if I if I took and put the water inside of a pot and set it on the stove and the heat is touching this cold water, that water that's cold, the atoms you're gonna see things, you're gonna see these bubbles in there, you're gonna see it start chemically changing. It's, it's modifying this mathematics. Now this boiling, the water moving real fast. Like, what's happening here? Is this magic? Is this a miracle? No, it's just a scientific wonder. But if you understand the cause, then you'll understand the effect. If you understand the effect, you'll understand the cause. If you see the effect and you don't understand the cause, but you know there has to be a cause, you never get thrown into spookism. They never take you out of the realm of the law's mathematics. You stick with your lessons. You stick with your blessings. You stick with the gods and the earth's call that, that 120. You stick with those principles. Now, in the future, they're going to come with all kind of trick knowledge trying to tell you that the water isn't water. Because mathematically, the water may not be water. It, it could be... Vodka in here. <laughs> I mean, it could, it could be potatoes that vibrated, but that doesn't change the principle. The principle is the law of vibration, meaning that in order for that potato to get distilled and turn into vodka, it still takes the law of vibration. In order for that beautiful, healthy, fresh piece of fruit to turn into a bottle of wild eyes rose or some red wine or some white wine, there had to be a law of vibration. In order for that poppy plant to get cut and that tar come, that black tar come out and this, it get transformed into morphine or heroin or some dope, there had to be the law of vibration. The coca leaf. You you gotta break that leaf. You gotta extract that cocaine, that crack out of that natural, beautiful, healthy leaf. So when you take it in different forms, it becomes a poison. But every poison is a medicine. Every medicine is a poison. Too much food make you fat and bloated, it kills you. Too much poison kills you. Just a little, you ready to get surgery, you got shot, and they just give you just the right mathematical amount of poison. They just inject you with the right amount of morphine. You're in heaven while you're in hell. So there's a science to this. So this water that is vibrating inside of that pot, it converts from this liquid form into a steam or a so-called gas. It literally will disappear in front of your eyes. If you take this water and put it in your freezer and you freeze it for a few hours, the atoms in that water is going to slow down. And this liquid water turns into a solid rock. It turns into a piece of ice at 32 degrees. When you put it in that pot, that water boils at 212 degrees. There is a science. There is a mathematics. There is nothing but Islam involved in everything in creation. But we didn't always call it Islam. The day we say it's chemistry, but it's chemistry. It's our ancestors. It's the ancient comedic mathematical powers of the gods. When you hear Isis cast a spell, she wasn't doing nothing magical. Read her spell. It's, it's a science. She's taking the mental and the physical. They, they talking about garlic. There's a chemical in there. There's a chemical in the so-called witch's brew. The the the, the women and men that study and believe in Wicca in the modern form is talking some spooky stuff. But those that study the original ancient teachers of Wicca is like, we're teaching freedom, justice, and equality. We're teaching peace. We're teaching reality. We don't believe in spooky nothing. We don't believe in ghosts and goblins and witches flying around on brooms or whatever the case may be. But we understand that 
if the mind's eye can imagine a woman getting on a broom and flying through the air, someone will produce an airplane or helicopter or rocket that she could fly through the whole universe if she wanted to, because it has to begin here before it's seen out here. The fourth principle, the principle of polarity. That's Dr. Yakub Malik Shabazz's law. Opposites attract, like repels. If you take a piece of metal and you hit it real hard, boom, that vibration, because all the laws work with one another. That's the law of correspondence. Meaning the mentalism works with polarity. <laughs> I mean, it all are intertwined like a gumbo. It's, it's just one. You see, we, 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 we say the black man's mind, it just simplified. I mean, we say it comes from God, the creator, whatever nomenclature, scientists, but like it all, the other universe, everything came, you know, as a manifestation of energy. It's the same teaching, okay? But this mathematical law of polarity of Dr. Yakub Lee Shabazz teaches us, you know, the law of magnetism. Like I said, the earth's spinning. That motion is, is that friction in the earth. In the center of this earth is metal. It's nickel in there, mainly. You know what I mean? Imagine rubber, metal rubbing up against each other. It's going to produce a magnetic field. It's going to produce the law of attraction and repulsion. Is the mathematics going to still be there? Attraction, repulsion, cohesion, assimilation, dissimulation, creation, projection, reception, intuition. You'd be like, well, um, how are you learning this? intuition. What do the religious spooky people call it? Oh, it was revealed by divine inspiration of God. Yeah, but not a mystery God. It don't work like you just don't understand a process. You don't understand how you could get so much in tune with it. It just start flowing. Now, I mean, it all just comes together. It all makes perfect sense. It's all mathematics. It's all universal. Okay. So that is the mathematical law of polarity. Now, I mean, you know, you have Dr. Yaku at the age of six, you know, he died at the age of 152. I know a lot of people say 150, but the messenger clarified and went depth into it in the 15,000 year history. It's when he actually died at the age of 152 years. Now, I mean, and Yaku, he, he took in playing with the lodestone. Now, I mean, a lodestone, for those of you that may not know, a lodestone is like, when when I was when I was a uh, a child, I used to experiment with all kind of stuff. But one of the things I used to do was um back I don't know if you remember this. Um back in the early seventies, they had little trans transistor radios that looked just like a regular pack of cigarettes. My father used to smoke Winston cigarettes. So he had a Little radio, FM, AM radio, little antenna come out. You turn the radio on, you know I mean? The station, you adjust the volume. And I was fascinated with that because I seen him with real packs of cigarettes. You know I mean? Good thing was he didn't smoke around us, but, you know, he had he had a little pack of um, Winston's. You know what I mean? So I was like, can I um play with that? He's like, it's not a toy. And he's seen the disappointment in my face. So I guess he felt sorry for me. He's like, it's not a toy, but you can have it. If you break it, it's yours. So you want to take care. You know what I mean? So I'm like, all right. So I'm listening to this thing. And I'm listening to static. I mean, you know, and I would turn it on the static, like, there's no music, no interviews, talk shows, or whatever. I'm like in between channels at the end of channels on AM, whatever. And it's just noise. Like, you know, shh. But psychologically, biologically, chemically, scientifically, naturally, divinely, I didn't know that the megahertz AM and FM radio is like having a radio in your head. FM is what they scientifically call frequency modulations. AM is what you call amplitude modulations. 
neurologists, people that study the human brain and be like, yo, listen, you can listen to the rain. You can listen to the static. The, the Buddhist monks knew you could just hit the rim of the joint. You could hear somebody chanting in Buddhism. You can hear the Native Americans. You can hear the Africans. You can hear the natural river running. You can hear the animals. Now, I mean, the birds, those things, these natural sounds that we don't get in this highly diverse technological world that we presently live in, we getting away from natural sounds. So I used to sleep in a deep sleep hearing that. And I was curious, like, what's in this radio that made me get such a deep sleep like that? I was in dreamland out, out. I usually be up, I, too much energy. I'm, I'm the type, you know, I, it's nothing for me to be up three, four in the morning. I mean, I always had real high energy. You know what I mean? You know, they want me to slow down, but it's like, I'm not tired. I'm not sleepy. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, people walk with me be like, yo, my man, slow down. I mean, young boys be like, yo, where you going, oh, hey? I'm, I'm in my North Philly stroll. I'm out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Message told us he wants to be um, um, fast think, quick thinking, fast moving, and right on down to the modern day and times. That, that was me as a mentally dead. You know what I mean? So out of curiosity, I was like, let me look in this radio. And I got something. I opened it up. And I opened it up. I'm studying it, you know what I mean? And I'm looking at the little circuitry and all that stuff there. And I'm, I am I used a nail to open it. I had little screws on the back. So I took a nail, unscrewed it. But then I was playing around with it. And to my surprise, the nail got attracted to the speaker. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> now, here I am. <laughs> Looking at this, it's a nail in his hand, and it's the radio speaker, and the nail was like, Psh. and I would pull it off, and it would come off, but it would resist me pulling it off. Psh. I'm like, whoa, this is deep. I took that piece out and isolated it and took it. Psh. Psh. Ran my dad, dad, look. Psh. Psh. He said, yeah, that's a magnet. A magnet? He's like, yeah, he's like, what, you broke your radio? I was like, no, nah, I, I just took it apart. I could put it back together. <laughs> he laughed. He said, probably could. He said, no, nah, that's, that's, a, that's a magnet. You know what I mean? I was like, a magnet? Hmm, interesting. So now I'm running around with this magnet. It don't stick to the wall. <laughs> stick to the refrigerator. This is old-fashioned refrigerators. They had metal in there. Stick to the refrigerator. Stick to the stove. It don't stick to the floor. It sticks, sticks to the to cars, it don't stick to this, it don't stick to trees, you know what I mean? It don't stick to insects. So I'm just running around my little magnet, you know what I mean, playing with this thing, you know what I mean? And when I was running, playing around with my magnet, I accidentally dropped it. I was like, oh man, I dropped it. And when it hit the ground, i never forget, I was like in a, um, a used car lot, you know what I mean? So it's like a bunch of junk all on the ground. And it hit the ground. And I seen it, though. So I picked it up. When I picked it up, it was all this dirt stuck to it. I'm like, what the heck? So I'm trying to get the dirt. And it, every time I try, it stick right back to it. So I'm like, dang. So I had to force the dirt off it. Then I'm like, what the heck? So I took the magnet and touched it on the ground. And when I touched it on the ground, all this stuff kept sticking to it. So I'm like, what? Is it metal in here? I mean... Then I noticed that the little rock would stick to it. The little rock would stick to another rock. I didn't understand it at the time, but as an adult, doing my research on Dr. Yaku Malik Shabazz, it dawned on me, oh, that was a natural lodestone. A lodestone is a natural magnetic rock found all in the world. It's all in the, in the earth. You know what I mean? It's the North Pole, South Pole, opposites attracts, light repels, lost some miles, and that's the number two. The one to 40, as the gods put it. You know what I mean? So basically, you don't have to make a magnet. <laughs> there are natural magnets already in the ground under the, under your house. There's, there's magnets already in the North Pole, already in the South Pole, already on the East Side, already on the West Side. And these rocks 
big ones and small ones, you put them near each other, they attract. You turn them around, they repel. They won't stick together. Opposites attracts and like repel. So the seven hermetic principles teach us that the first principle is mentalism, the all is mind. The second is correspondence, as above, so beneath. The third one is vibration. Everything is constantly in motion or vibrating. Even when we physically die, our body does what? Keep on vibrating. Dead people, that hair keep growing. That fingernail's still growing. They fermenting it, you know, as a minister, I, I hold funerals. Now, I mean, you know, I, I prepare the body for funerals, for example. Now, I mean, you know, you, you know, sometimes you have to, you know, for health reasons, put the deceased um, person inside of cold storage, put them in a refrigerator, a big refrigerator, basically. And they be like on a gurney, whatever. So we got to come in and clean the body, prepare them. Now, they're just trying to make them presentable for the family and friends, what have you. Now, I mean... And the physically dead, they, they may have ate some dinner or something or breakfast or something. They, may, they still have food in their digestive system. So that food is still fermenting. So they may fart. They may um, move. <laughs> I mean, not because they're alive. You'd be like, man, this dude stood up. He, he sat up. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's the zombies. Like, nah, it's... it's, it's a reflex. It's natural. It's natural chemical um, things taking place inside that physically dead body. So let me understand in a personal way that the physical dead, they're physically dead forever. But our concept of death is really spooky. Our concept of life is really spooky. Now, I mean, they'd be like, the, 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 the living is dead and the dead is living, but not like you think in organized religion. There ain't no ghosts and goblins. There's no zombies. There's no um, physical reincarnations or resurrections. You're not going to flow up in the sky with no mystery gods and none of that kind of stuff. However, because of the law of vibrations, your body will disintegrate. You know what I mean? And your body will turn back into atomic particles. And that body, those atomic particles will eventually rise up and go into the, the universe with the rest of the atoms. Because you came from them atoms. You're going to go back to them atoms. And that cycle repeats itself over again and again and again. But we spook it up and misinterpret it as karma in a spooky way or the resurrection or the rapture or heaven and hell in a spooky sense. There's nothing spooky in none of it. It's all real if it's properly understood. I mean, in accord with universal mathematics are using your lessons as your base. So the fourth principle is the law of polarity. Then comes the principle of rhythm. Everything has its rhythm. You know, hip hop, it's all about rhythm. You know what I mean, the African drum. You know what I mean, the the, the um, the, you know, just having that. What, what Jesus say, you are the salt of the earth. You know what I mean, you know, you'd be like, well, how did you know how to play the piano? Or you learned how to sing like that? And you never was taught. You never had no professional teacher teaching you that. It's like just naturally got soul. I mean, it's natural rhythm. Now, I mean, the sixth principle is the principle of cause and effect. You'd be like, everything's mathematics. Now, I mean, you, you know, the law of causation. Now, I mean, there's a cause, there's an effect. Now, I mean, if if um they say if an object is set in motion, it stays in motion until it meets some resistance. So there's a cause and effect to everything, even if we don't understand a cause and we see the effect. The principle of gender. Gender is there's a male and a female principle in everyone and everything. The XY chromosome is in God. Um, the Father God, uh, Mother Nature principle is in the universe. That's in everything. Always was, always is, always will be. Now, the spooky people going to tell you, no, it's just the male principle, and this is only... Um, 
the God. It's like, you can't have God without the devil. Don't don't get it twisted. Don't be like, oh, let's teach us Dr. Yaku grabbed the devil 6,600 years ago. And all. It's like, yeah. But don't think that that's the origin of the devil or the origin of the negative. I mean, if that's true, how come before the white folks came, 50,000 years ago, we strained away from civilization to go live a jungle life? Huh? Think about that. 16,000 years ago, we fight amongst ourselves. The natives, the, the Indians, is, is, is being exiled across the Bering Straits into the wilderness of North America. Huh? 66 trillion years ago, the black man is trying to kill everybody. He physically killed a billion people. He physically tried to blow up the whole earth. Ain't no white folks. Ain't no physical devils around. But the dominant and recessive gene was already in us. The polarity, law of polarity, the law of correspondence, as it is in, it is out. That negative gene, that recessive gene that's in, you'll see recessive ideas. You see dominant and weak ideas. He, he got a spooky idea. Oh, we we um going to have everybody on earth speak the same dialect. Mother Nature, like, for what? <laughs> I mean, why? You'd be like, oh, I got this idea. We should, we shouldn't, the black man shouldn't have sex with the black woman. The black man should have sex with the trees. Mother Nature, like, it's not set up like that. You you could try that crap if you want. <laughs> but you'd be like, well, I'm going to get the tree pregnant. It won't be a natural baby because it's not in the harmony with the universal order of things. <laughs> I mean, there's, 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 there's a seven principles here. It's, it's, a, it's a mathematical principle here. Now, I mean, now, if you could turn that tree into the black woman, that's something totally different. But we don't do unmathematical things in the universal order of things. You know what I mean? So these seven hermetic principles, I want you to understand, are known generally as the Kabbalion. You know what I mean? And Master Far Muhammad teaches us that we have seven mind dimensions. The physical, the emotional, the mental, the spiritual, the soul, the self, and the will. We vibrate on the physical plane. The aim is to get back to the will plane, the will of Allah, the will of God. You know what I mean? When we get to that level as a species, as a human family, as a lost found tribe of Shabazz or whatever nomenclature you want to utilize. We're coming from a savage state to the civilized state. We're coming from the physical. Now, with our religions, we might be on a second plane of seven. We like, we're just so emotional. He's talking about my Jesus. Stop Allah. These, these Kafirs is talking about the loss of Ben White the Island came in person. Allah can't come in the person. <laughs> Pardon me, Bob. Did you just tell me a law can't come in the person as far Muhammad? Yes, yes, I told you that. And I could, oh, stop right there for a second. A law, the God, the creator, the omnipotent, all powerful, all knowing, is limited? You know something your God can't do? With my God, all things are possible. With my law, a law does what he wills. Now, what the real issue is, is not that a law can't come to person. What the real issue is, at this vibration, at this level of your comprehension, you just can't understand how or why a law would come in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. That's the real issue. The issue isn't that a law can't be the black man. The issue is you don't believe a law is the black man. Your worldview contradicts the concept that a law can come in the person. And I respect that. You still my bro. I still love you. <laughs> I mean, still love my sister. But I understand that your foundation is maybe... The sooner your foundation is the Pope of Rome, your foundation is the Baptist Church, your foundation is your Imam or your Reverend or your Guru or your Enlightener, your your Minister, your 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 Rabbi or what have you. you know what I mean, and to you, 
they was some real smart folks. They 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 knew what they was talking about. They spoke pure Hebrew or Arabic or English, whatever. You know what I mean, and it's like it's like ten homies being in the gym, and one of them is able to bench press a hundred and twenty pounds. But the big homie, he, he he all muscle, he caught diesel. And he bench pressed 500. <laughs> you like, yo, that dude's the strongest dude in the world. <laughs> I mean, because you never seen nobody bench press 500 but him or her. <laughs> I mean, but if they went to the Olympics <laughs> or they went to a worldwide competition, they be like, he weak as water. <laughs> You're like, yo, dude, lift is 500 pounds. Put 2,000 on there. Huh? <laughs> it's all relative. Everything is relative. You know what I mean? So with that said and dead, I, I want to uh, take y'all to, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going I'm to put these excerpts from this video for y'all about the people of the Trois, the uh, Bakwa, or the so-called Pygmies. But it's not really about them. It's really about that mystery God, you know what I mean? And I want to show you this part because it's two white men, in my humble opinion, they talk in common sense. They teach us some good information. And I want to share that information with y'all. So let's, let me go upstairs. 